Well, you gave me a choice of talking about love <laughs> or the four billion years of evolution of the planet Earth, and I decided the four billion years was a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everyone. This is the Global Wisdom Community Call. People will be joining for a few minutes or for a few seconds and uh, while they're joining we'll just pause and let everybody get get on the call. You should be seeing our panelists today, our, our host Will Tegel and our guests Kathy Mines, Jane Jack Morales, Jim Hickman, and Judith Yost. And Judith Yost. <laughs> um, um, stress and threat. But we're talking about most of this in everyday life. That it's still active in us. And, and while our brain is perceiving it sort of from the hardwired position of fear and aggression, because that's a, a base state for many of us that comes out of of evolution, both cultural and biological. Um, there is what uh, I have a colleague on the call, um, Leon Galindo, who here in here in Bolivia, who talks about presence and how presence addresses many of these issues. And from that place, that a choice can be made about is this a negative or a positive experience? And I'd give one example um, from something I saw on the news a few weeks ago. We all know that some of the presidential candidates are anti, let's say, immigration in a certain way, to overstate it a bit. But, and in one of the presidential candidates' rally, uh, a man who has been very negative about Muslims um, a Muslim woman came to the rally. So here's a choice. We either see it as a threat because we overestimate threats, or we see it as an opportunity, and mostly we underestimate opportunities. And in that consciousness, it was a threat. They, the guards came and they ushered her out without any in a sense, due process, no questioning, et cetera. And it was an opportunity to shift a little bit this bias around all Muslims are threats. So it doesn't have to be a negative experience. It's an opportunity into a positive um, um, assessment of an opportunity to, to do something different which has to do with overcoming the caveman, cavewoman brain and moving it into the 21st century um, in a significant way. Thank you, thank you, Jim. And coming back with you, uh, Jane Jack, and while Jane Jack's talking, we're going to have time for a, a couple of questions or comments from, from those of you who are in our circle. We have a really great circle from all over the earth today. Uh, so. Uh, Dan is going to tell you how to hold up your hand in just a moment. But uh, Jane Jack, coming back to you. Well, I keep, I want to just say uh, that, um, you know, just to kind of bring it down to a personal level, uh, if we talk about, you know, love at home and in our marriages. I know uh, that waiting at the barrier for, anything is is really important like that's what i've learned from myofascial releases barriers and problems they're not they're just barriers they're not good they're not bad you don't have to break through them you don't have to do anything about them you feel them and you hang out there and you wait and i think it is a secret to long lasting happy uh marriages I mean, it's helped mine. My husband's waited at barriers on certain issues for years, but he's, and he's not pushing. He just waits, you know, and every now and then there's a little bit of pressure. And then, you know, 10 years later, whoo, it just opens and the whole relationship opens and it's broader and deeper and it happens and it improves your sex life. And, 
those are, you know, being present in the body and waiting at the barrier um, in an intimate relationship is just super important. And if you have a pain-free body, it's easier to do that. <laughs> good, 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 good. Thank you. That's for sure. That's for sure. So, Dan, if you'd say something about how they uh, they can. Uh, yes. So, if you would, if you would like to uh, make a comment or add something to the call, if you'll hover your mouse at the top of the Zoom window, um, up at the top left, you'll see uh, an icon of a raised hand. And if you raise your hand, we'll see that and call on you. So while, while we're waiting to see if we can manage this, uh, there we have a uh, uh, Leon Galindo from uh, Bolivia who can come into our call. Oh. Gre greetings, okay. Leon. <laughs> well, well, welcome from the Andes, or the edge of the Andes. You'll, oh. you'll need to unmute down at the left-hand bottom of the page. Hi, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes, there we you can. are. Hello, all. Very nice to meet you. Thanks to Jim Hickman for the invitation and for connecting. A uh, very quick comment um, on presencing and the use of energy regarding the last uh, question that was made or the comment that was made. Um, I particularly like the work of Morihei Ueshiba. He's the founder of Aikido, a Japanese fellow who uh, really harnessed martial arts uh, for for peace. And he's one of the the, the men that really worked on, on harnessing what one could call negative energy and using that negative energy as in jiu-jitsu or as in judo and uh, transforming it into what we could call positive energy. So I think it's a great example of um, a different level of body work or psychosomatic work that can be used in a creative way. So just that quick comment and thank you very much for this incredible conference and great to be a part of this new community. Good, good. You. And, and, and you bring up our batting average and give us a little bit of spice to our stew by coming today. So thank you for being here. Yeah, good. So do we have another, uh, Dan? No. No. Okay. So I want to come back. While I'm, oh, yeah, we have. Uh, yeah. Let's, let's, let's see if we can bring Will Turner in. <laughs> I don't know if we can see. Are you calling in on your cell phone, Will? Huh? I don't know if it's working with. Yes, it's system. working. It's working. Yeah. We can't see, you, but we can hear you. So comment. Okay. Well, um, I have with me my six string guitar, and I was wondering in terms of relation to dealing with negative and, posit and positivity um, with me, um, a lot of. Um, the negative experience that I've experiences that I've had um, have turned into the most beautiful music that I've created, and so I think that it's interesting when you mentioned Quanta Parker um, <laughs> was dealing with that with dealing with negative and positive vibrations in a room with Jane Jack. I when I was playing um, my guitar at, at uh, over winter break. My mom and dad have three cats at home, and they all really despise each other. There's a big rivalry going on. <laughs> so I'm playing my guitar, and I'm playing one of my, I guess I can kind of consider one of my sad songs. Um, or it was more, it's all written in minor, so it's, it's a very sad-sounding song, but it, it has a good moral behind it. And so I'm here, sitting here playing the guitar for about 10 minutes, and um, I guess you could call trying to translate negative energy into positive music. And I turn around, and all three of the cats are sitting not one foot next to each other, uh, listening to me play. <laughs> and I had never seen them in the same room before. <laughs> so I think there's a lot to say um, with, trans with transforming uh, negative energy into positive energy. And I think that my generation needs – there's going to be a lot of negative things like going, going on in life. And you can harvest po uh, negative energy just as well as positive energy, I, I believe. And so – for me, it helps synthesize making music, but I don't know if anyone has any thoughts on that. Well, and I know that the Beatles only play in minor, and so it's interesting that they that they have a way to use music as a field to show an audio form of negative and positive energy. Yeah, thank you, thank you for that, uh, Will. And and Will is calling from from uh, Florida State University, 
And are you are you inside or outside? Oh, there's. Uh, there you are. He's inside. Did I, did I pop up? Oh, cool. Uh, I'm inside in my room. Oh, good, good. And how did? Are you calling with your phone or with your uh, computer? Yeah, I'm using my uh, my cell phone, and I just there's a little button on the bottom that says I just saw it said um, allow camera use or whatever, so I clicked it, and I guess it worked. Well, good, good, good. I'm so happy that you can instruct all of us about that. And and the next time that we uh, have our circle in March, uh, we'll have Dan uh, bring your instruction in. So thank you so much for that comment, Will. Yeah, this is an awesome um, system. And I mean, I was blown away when I first did the call um, last year, um, just with audio. And um, I can't wait to show some of my peers what this is all about. I mean, the energy in the room when I was listening to each of the people talk about um, their piece, it was just amazing to be able to see the facial expressions and the gestures and everything. You can really see the, the energy. I really enjoy having the visual aspect to it. Good, good. It's always good to connect with you, Will. Heart well, love you, Will. Can I make a short Yes, yes, Jim. Yeah, just in commenting on what um, he was saying, it points to the later structures of the brain in evolution because creativity, making music, dis creative decision making, etc., are all the, the later structures that this unbelievable brain has unfolded upon itself to overcome, in a certain sense, to balance out some of these early pieces that were just about physical survival. So I really appreciated that comment because it points toward the opportunity we have that is inherent in our brain to do all kinds of extraordinary new and different things to lead us into a different kind of civilization. Mm. Right. So, uh, yeah, very, very much so. And I just want to offer a moment of gratitude for, for, for this platform, that we can see each other, we can touch each other cool. visually, <coughs> we, can, we can begin to experience, and we have Bolivia and Canada and Florida and Europe and Australia, all around the world here, uh, bringing our energy together so we can uh, walk upright and we can breathe well. So we're coming to the close, but before we close with Judith, um, I want to uh, have an announcement with, uh, with Sheila Safer. Uh, she has a couple of announcements to make about uh, accessing resources. Greetings, everybody. So um, on the chat, if you hover over the bottom of your window and click on the chat, you'll be able to see uh, a few of our questions that have been out there, but also you'll be able to see some links and names of classes that are coming up. They're a beautiful way for us to continue tending the seeds of our new civilization, which we're doing today in our call. And, um, <clears throat> and also there's a cost associated with the production of these community calls and to help us make the community calls available in the future, we invite you to make a donation on the web page. And the link is, and the link will be on the chat. It's the link to our web page for um, the community calls. And on that same web page is where you can find the CD that has been gifted to you by Kathy Mines. It's, so it's the same page where you have the donation available. You have the um, past recordings available. You have um, this beautiful CD gift from Kathy that you can download on your own, and that's all available on the very last <clears throat> link that we just put up on the chat. So thank you. And thank you so much for that, um, Sheila. So let's let's uh, bring ourselves together and uh, just take a nice breath. Inhaling, holding briefly at the top, and then slowly exhaling to the sweet spot at the bottom. Taking in the good, releasing the fascia, connecting with the music of the
the universe and connecting with you to close. I want to close today with a brief little Earth Tribe song that I love so much and I think it's very appropriate today. <clears throat> All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. Tun ka tun ka I look for you in eyes. Tunkashala, Tunkashala, please open up my heart. All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. Oh, blessings. And uh, next month, the first Saturday in March, we'll be exploring the relentless pursuit of possibility. <laughs> the relentless pursuit of possibility. And we'll have others, and hopefully, the people we have uh, as resources today will join us in some form or fashion. And we hope you'll be with us. Apopacho.